way up here. Jessica Beckham is on a quest. See all sorts of things flying around. To catch some fuzzy flying insects. No bumblebees though. With great bee expertise. That's a sweat bee. She searches. I think those are so pretty. That's not what I'm trying to catch today. <laughs> the bees that beckon are bumblebees. Today we are out here surveying bumblebees in a little roadside area of Denton County. Um, that's an American bumblebee right there. Jessica has been studying bumblebees at the University of North Texas while pursuing a PhD in environmental science. Here in Texas, we have sweat bees, digger bees, leaf cutter bees, resin bees. About seven to 800 species of bees that are native bees, including nine species of bumblebees. Usually when people think of bees, they think of honeybees, but honeybees are actually non-native species. Honeybee declines have been noted in the news. Back in 2005, we started hearing about a phenomenon called colony collapse disorder. Unusual numbers of honeybees were dying off and nobody understood quite why. In these troubling times for honeybees, Jessica wanted to understand how native bees are doing. I'm studying native pollinators, bumblebees in particular, because native pollinators might serve as an insurance policy against these losses of honeybees. Bees are critical to the food supply. They pollinate cherries, apples, almonds, onions, and many other crops. And they pollinate billions of dollars of crops each year. Insect pollinators in particular are responsible for about 80% of the pollination of wildflowering plants and about 75% of our agricultural plants. Bumblebees are great pollinators because bees deliberately collect pollen and they have a lot more hair than honeybees and they move a lot of pollen from flower to flower. I don't know what they are. I will take about a 15 minute walk through this big patch of flowers to determine what species are here and ultimately look at the persistence of these species in our area. Got another one. Studying bumblebees takes time. Shoot and some fast reflexes. I feel like I struck out. <laughs> but field work is the fun part, right? <laughs> it's hot. I mean, you, you get chiggers and ticks. Sometimes you see a bee and you don't catch it. <laughs> really though, it's pleasant work for me. Now I got her. This is Bombus pennsylvanicus, which is known as the American bumblebee. This is our most common species here in Texas, but nationally this species is declining. And so the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department has designated this a species of greatest conservation need. You ready to go, girl? Texas Parks and Wildlife has helped fund the research. There you go. In part through sales of conservation license plates. We've received a horn lizard license plate grant as well as a state wildlife grant. To understand Texas bumblebee trends, Jessica compares her surveys with specimens at the Elm Fork Natural Heritage Museum at UNT, where the bumblebee collection spans 60 years. Museum collections provide a rich resource for determining historic presence of lots of different species. The comparisons have been encouraging. What we found is that the current presence of bumblebees here in Northeast Texas is almost identical to the historic presence. About 85% of our roadside sites had at least one bumblebee. Further research has examined bumblebee genetic diversity and the kinds of urban habitats they use. I looked at eight different sites, some community gardens and an organic garden. Are any of them blooming at this point? Some urban wild no. spaces as well. We want to know what types of green spaces are good for bees and also how we can manage our green spaces as we grow cities. The research suggests ways we can help pollinators in public spaces like roadsides and even in our own backyards. You want to try and have flowers that are blooming all the way from about March to October here in Texas because bumblebees are active throughout that time. And you also would do well to avoid the use of pesticides because not only are they effective in killing your pest species, but they also are bad for your pollinator species. Jessica has completed her studies and is Dr. Beckham now. 
but her work will continue to benefit bee conservation. American bumblebee. As if a sign of gratitude, the hundreds of bees she handled kept their stingers to themselves. I've never been stung by a bumblebee, surprisingly. Since they help our food and flowers grow, maybe we all owe some thanks to the humble bumblebee. Yay for bumblebees. <laughs>